Hey everyone, this is Christopher Morgan from ServiceNow. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about risk management and how ServiceNow as a tool is able to help organizations manage and plan for risks. So this started when I was talking to a customer who was interested in deploying the ServiceNow project management application across their enterprise. They had a very robust risk management practice in place already and they were curious about how they could use some of their existing tools and methodology in the platform that didn't automatically exist. The main one was this 5x5 five five risk matrix that they use to calculate the criticality of any given risk. So in this scenario, the inputs are going to be the likelihood and how likely this risk could happen and the consequences of how impactful this risk could be should it happen. We then use that logic in the matrix to calculate its criticality. This customer is also interested in how the life cycle of these risks was going to trend over time. So if we had a risk that was becoming more critical, we would definitely want to be able to identify that. And if we had risks that were staying stagnant or becoming less critical, we'd want to be able to track that as well so we could attach the appropriate disposition or the approach we were going to take to that risk. Now, there are no shortage of matrices out there that you're going to be able to find. If you do a Google search on risk matrix or the 5x5 five five risk matrix, risk matrix calculator, everybody has got a different opinion. There's 3x3s, there's 5x5s, five five there's 7x7s, seven sevens. there's different degrees of criticality, different colors. The one that we opted for is a 5x5 five five and it has three different levels of criticality. Let's go over to the instance and check that out. So today, in the ServiceNow Project and Portfolio application, the risk level is just a field that's attached to portfolios and projects. It's very rudimentary. You can change this. You can update it. It is on the project level. However, we want to be able to get a little bit more granular on our risk tracking. So if I go into a project here, and this is just a sample project, has to do with database construction, I have a related list at the bottom that's showing me the risks associated with this project. So I can see a short description and I can see the criticality, the trend, and the approach I want to take right from a glance. Just like every list in service now, I can drill into these to get additional details. Now what we have here is the two choice lists that allow me to select consequences and likelihood. And you'll notice the criticality is currently high. If I were to change this to, say, 1, based on our logic, it's going to drop the criticality to low. Let me put them both at 3. And let me go over to this risk matrix. So what I've done here is I have a UI page pop-up that shows our 5x5 five five risk matrix with the different degrees of criticality. It's taking the inputs from the form, so in this case 3 and 3, and putting the risk number on the appropriate cell in, in this table here. This is live, so if I change it to 2 and 4 and go back to my risk matrix and refresh, it's going to put it in the appropriate place as well. I'd like to note that this risk in here is simply a label. We could have a big black X. We could have a count. We could have anything there that we'd like. I just thought that the risk ID uh, might be appropriate to put there. The customer was also really interested in how to track these risks and the criticality of them over time. This kind of led me to some logical questions here on actually how do we define how a risk is trending from a critical standpoint. And I just mocked up a couple of scenarios here that I didn't have great answers for. So in the first one here, I can see that this risk has increased in criticality over its history, but at the last data point we took, it started to improve a little bit. Well, obviously, if we look at its lifespan over the trend, it looks good. If we look at the most recent change, it doesn't look so good. That's emphasized on the, the chart over here on the right, which is basically showing a risk change across the board. There's no pattern, really no way to, to get good data out of that. In the bottom left, I'm at the same place I started in regards to this risk, but I've had some changes about halfway through. The first half was looking kind of rocky, the second half was not looking so good, and the third remained 
static and it remained relatively low, but it went past the approved time. It went past the planned time we were uh, we were expecting that to take. So doesn't that in itself, shouldn't that trigger some sort of logical change? You can ask yourself these questions all day. There is no right answer. I don't know what the right answer is. That is for each organization to decide, and that's kind of how I left it. What I did was I decided to take the start time and the current time and compare those. So anything that happens in regards to the criticality of the risk in the middle, I'm ignoring. I certainly welcome you to take the code that I have and implement your own algorithm. You can do that logic by modifying one business rule and have it work uh, whatever suits your organization best. Let's go back over to the instance here and kind of track these in real time. So it was risk 14 and I came in here and based on changing that, it didn't change the criticality. It's saying that the trend is unchanged. Automatically now, this has filled in the appropriate approach. So project managers like to match the trend they're expecting with the approach and how they're going to um, respond to that. Let's play around here a little bit. Let's try to make it worse. We save that risk. When I come back here, sure enough, it's trending, worsening, and we've taken a different approach to it. Let's go back in here, see if we can make it better. So that should work. We save that risk. And now we see that this risk is low and it's improving. You can do that with any of the risks here and uh, really track it over time. So let's talk about how I did this. It wasn't very hard. It took a couple hours of work. Initially, when the customer came to me and said, hey, we want to take these two inputs and calculate a third from that, I was immediately reminded of the priority calculator that's already out of the box or out of the cloud on the incident form. So in that tool, that series of scripts, a service desk agent is able to take an urgency and a prior and a impact and automatically calculate the priority from there. So that's really what I did. I went into my instance and I first stole all those scripts and then did an insert and stay on them and I changed the name to instead of calculate priority to calculate criticality. So that really got me a jump start. I also modified the risk table. So I had to add additional fields that ServiceNow didn't ship with out of the box, like consequence, likelihood, criticality, the trend, and the approach. And for good measure, I gave the risks their own number or risk ID. So that's how we can track risks across the instance and across different applications. So it's very likely that a risk we're experiencing in our project is also a risk that we're going to experience as part of a change request. You can link tables together in ServiceNow that's part of the core platform capability. So wouldn't it be great to just have that one risk with one name throughout the enterprise that everybody was able to track and share it across different applications and business processes like project and change or any other task that we'd like to associate to? I thought so and that's why I did that. Now, the business rules that I modified, again, I was able to steal a lot of the code from the calculate priority applications and I did that. Uh, you know, our founder Fred Luddy likes to say that good artists copy, great artists steal. I'm a big fan of that and that's why I took that approach. The second business rule you see there is force criticality count that's included in that as well. My get date range business rule. So what that's going to do is go through the risk history. I didn't put that on here but I added another table in the platform called risk history. It's completely denormalized and when you update your risk what it does is it stamps that field with three different values. That risk ID, the criticality at the time, and then the date. So we're able to track that over time. And again, I put that feature in there so if so you could implement your own logic based on how you consider the trend to be defined. So what that third business rule does is do a glide aggregate, figure out the earliest date it figures out the criticality on that date, and then it looks at the current criticality, and from there, it looks at, it figures out the delta and determines the appropriate trend. It then updates the record with that trend value. When that trend value updates, fourth business rule, oh, by the way, we're going to automatically set the approach from that so that the project manager 
knows the best methodology to deal with that. There was a script include involved. Again, it was stolen from the Calculate Priority. It's called Service Ajax, Service Ajax, Ajax Risk in my world, and there were a couple client scripts, um, all of which were stolen. The UI page is the pop-up that we saw. So I'm going to pop over to that code in the instance. So just so everyone remembers here, this is that UI page that's popping up here. So when I click this UI action, what I'm doing is I'm opening what we call a glide dialog window and I'm calling a UI page risk under bar chart five by five and passing it some parameters from the from the form here using the set preferences method. Let's go over to that UI page and take a look at the code. So there is a little bit of jelly here. What jelly is is an Apache technology that's able to take XML and parse it into HTML. Jelly is used for some of the uh, user interface customizations in ServiceNow and a little background with Jelly would be helpful anytime you're going to modify the ServiceNow UI. So based on those parameters, I'm able to calculate basically the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and I've got a table here. That image that you see is just the background image of that table. The table has I think it has seven rows across. Let me think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. So that's the five that means something and then there's a border around the, the image that we don't want to display anything with. So anything that I've given an ID to, C3L5, is going to correlate to the appropriate cell. And then down here in my script, what I'm doing is looking for the get document, get element by ID of that cell based on the X and Y coordinate, i.e. the likelihood and the criticality, picking that cell, and then I'm putting in the inner HTML, which is what fills the contents of that cell, and in my case, I use the, the risk uh, number, the risk ID. You could put anything in there. You do have a lot of data available to you at this point, and uh, you know I, I encourage you to to play around and to do that. So again, we change these coordinates. Let's keep them one and one. We open up the risk matrix, and it's going to populate that risk ID in the appropriate location. As we do this over time, it's going to calculate our trend, and then it's going to give us an appropriate approach. So where do we go from here? You know, we in the ServiceNow and the ITIL world are big fans of continual improvement. So this isn't meant to be finished. This is meant to be open and shared. And number one, I want your feedback. I'm not a project manager. I'm not a PMO. I don't want to be one. I'm interested in how you would like to use this, what you think, and where do you think we should go from here, first and foremost. A couple of things I would like to do is I'd like to bubble up all the risks associated with this project and then calculate that overall project risk level. Again, just that status of the project or portfolio automatically. And it might be cool on the project form to have a UI page that you bring up and it shows not just one risk, but all the risks laid out on that five by five matrix chart. That's something I'm going to start working on. I'd like to update that UI page to be bi-directional so I can actually click on the square that I want the risk to be and it would update the risk record. Again, change to the UI there is going to be possible with some uh, some scripting. And I'd like to clean up the global business rule. Global business rules are not that efficient. Generally, you want to put your global business rules if you have them into script includes. I copied the stuff from Calculate Priority, so it works now. To be you know more robust, we want to update that. So I want to thank you for watching this. Again, this is Christopher Morgan. You can reach out to me at any time. Christopher.Morgan at ServiceNow. Dot com. And I'm also making the update set available for you to download, install on your demo instances, install on your sandbox in instances, kick the tires and, and play around with. Thanks again. Glad to talk to you today. And I'm really glad to be able to show you how, can, how we can do some robust risk management by customizing the platform, all made, all made possible by the power of ServiceNow.